Hi, it's Neil Paddock from HowToProgramDrums.com. I hope you're doing well. And um, this video is about the James Paddock Mini Drum Tracks that we've just released. Um, and basically, if you've not heard of that before, we are offering 150 free MIDI drum tracks done by James Paddock of James Paddock Music. And uh, I thought I'd do this video because the second track called Action Stations has got some extra bits and pieces on it and you might not actually know what to do with them. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. Now at the moment we're looking at uh, Reason on the screen and I've basically gone to Dropbox, I've grabbed the Action Stations file from my downloads area and I've imported it into Reason using the import MIDI file screen. Okay, hopefully pretty standard. You should be able to grab the link, download it to your machine, import it into Reason without too many problems. So I've skipped that step for the purposes of this video. So once I've done that, if I now press the play button, I'm kind of hoping, I'm hoping you can hear that. We've got some weird sounds going on. We've got some piano sounds in there and stuff like that. Um, so if I show you on the screen, we've got piano, drums, 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 piano. And you might be thinking, why on earth is Reason selecting piano sounds? And that's because, well, let's see. The easiest way to describe it is that very, very standard drum tracks on MIDI always get rooted through channel 10 and then Reason knows exactly what they are. They say, oh right, it's a channel 10 thing, it must be a drum sound. So by default it drops in an ID8 instrument device. Sorry if this is boring, by the way, but I think, you know, if you need to, this is a necessary evil in order to get the best out of these MIDIs. If you, certainly if you're using Reason. Um, now, here's a quick cheat. This will only work on if you're on a 32-bit Windows system. Okay, so if you're on 64-bit, this will not work. Um, I would suggest that if you still are on 32-bit, you've got an older machine, that you go and get yourself a copy of Cakewalk Professional. And this is what it looks like. It's very similar to the software that uh, James and I have used for a very long time now, called Cakewalk Express. Oh, actually, ho-ho, this is actually Cakewalk Express. Um, anyway, never mind. It looks exactly the same as this, so I'm going to stick with Cakewalk Express for now. Now, just to backtrack a little bit, just now I was talking about Reason and we imported the MIDI file into Reason. Okay. Now we're looking at Cakewalk Express, it's a completely different piece of software. It will run on the machine at the same time, but only on a 32-bit machine. All right, I'm, I hope we're clear on that so far. Now, um, what I've done here is I've just opened up Action Stations in MIDI. No import required, you just open it and in it comes. Now, what I wanted to draw your attention to on this particular occasion, because there's lots of stuff we can cover here, I just want you to focus on the patch area over here, okay? So it says patch 119, it's not uh, terribly helpful, <clears throat> but if we go in and uh, if I hit my little forward slash button and mute everything else, Um, I don't know whether you're going to hear that until I play this back, but uh, basically that is a synth drum, okay? So we need to find out, and I think there's a way of changing the 1-9, one, one so it says something there, but I'm going to have to, I can't remember how to do that. So we know it's a synth drum, okay? And that corresponds to what we've got playing on our piano up here. Because if you think about it, MIDI is just a stream of ones and noughts. It comes down and then it comes down almost like on a 16 lane motorway into Reason. Um, Reason can find the stuff that's on motorway number 10 or channel number 10, but it didn't know what to do with this. So it's called it a piano, it's actually a synth drum. So we need to change that one. And similarly, if we go to the last track, which is also saying piano, we go back here and we turn that on and it gives us a clue anyway it's a taiko drum or taiko drum i suppose i should say 
and that one doesn't kick in until measure 17, which by dragging these things about, sorry if I'm going a bit quick, um, it's not usually a problem based on the feedback I get from some people. Still, you can't please everyone all the time, can you? Uh, measure 17. So we've got a, ta a taiko or a taiko drum. Sorry if I haven't said that right. Still, nobody's perfect. Um, so that's a taiko drum. So the question is now, how on earth, if you want to make this drum track sound like the original one, how do we get this piano track and this piano track and replace them with the right things? Well, as usual, there's a, a bunch of different ways of doing this, but I'm going to start with an NNXT. Easier to select than it is to say. And, uh, oh god, I've got to try and remember how to do this now. Oh, so, right, so we're going to the Reason Sound Bank, and I'm just going to grab a default one. Now, again, there's a number of ways we can do this, but I want to use this on this particular track. I'm going to replace the ID8. Probably the easiest way to do that is to go into your Reason Sound Bank folder and just somewhat arbitrarily pick the first patch that comes up. So, I usually use Grand Piano. So you might be thinking now, oh, that's clever, Neil. You've replaced a piano with a piano. Yeah, that's going to make my drum beat sound really cool. Well done. Well, there is another reason for doing this. So once we've got our piano patch installed, in fact, I'm going to pop it on the other one as well. It's just going to make things life. It's going to make life a bit easier later on. Uh, oh, good. And reason remembered where we are, so I can just do that down here as well. Okay. So we've replaced our two. ID8s with two NNXTs. Uh, and you might be thinking at this stage, well, what's, who cares? What's the difference? Well, an ID8 gives you a kind of general MIDI uh, device, but the range is quite limited. An NNXT, my God, that's difficult to say, gives you a whole range of like virtually anything on the planet, your own samples, all the ones in the Reason Factory Sound Bank. Uh, Reason Factory Sound Bank. So this is a sampler, okay? The ID8s are just kind of MIDI voice players, so they're quite limited in their scope, but they do a pretty good job of giving you a, a MIDI sound most of the time, except when you get a drum sound that's not on channel 10, which is why we're doing this. Okay, so uh, what I want to do now is I actually want to load up a sound font. Oh my god, what's a sound font? Well, you may already know. Uh, what do I want to do here? I just want to go into the computer. See, vert your eyes for a moment. Sound fonts. And I want to find Fluid R. Fluid R 3GM. Okay? Now I'm not redistributing really these, so you know, you're going to hear them. And I want to find a preset. So, you might say at this stage, what the hell is Neil doing? Or you know what I'm going to do next. A sound font is basically a library of sounds that somebody has painstakingly put together. This is one by Frank Wen, and it is probably my favourite. It tends to work straight out of the box first time without too much messing about. And now if we go back to our original number, it said, what was it, 116 or something? 119. All right, so shall we have a look for that? On this prototype, uh, on this thingy, what do you call it? One one nine. Whoa, hey, it's a synth drum. Okay, so Frank spent a couple of years, probably longer, doing this and uh, putting these in. So we've now got a synth drum on oh, channel one. Yeah. Okay. What does it sound like? Well, we've still got another piano going, so it doesn't sound that great at the moment. So let's go and change the other one. Now, do we know what the taiko drum is? We're going to do the same thing on this one here. Yeah? Uh, actually, I'll tell you what we we'll do. We we'll try something slightly different. I'm going to copy the patch. So see what I'm doing here. I'm going to copy the synth drum patch down to this second one and do paste patch. And that saves me going through all the rigmarole. Now I'm using Reason Seven, and they have upgraded it a bit. So dragging and dropping and stuff might be less tedious than it's been up to this point on Reason Eight. But I'm afraid for the purposes of this video, we're stuck with Reason 7.1. So what I'm going to do is going to go in and browse the patch. And it's being an idiot, basically, because it's taken me back to... 
it hasn't made any difference at all so I'm still going to have to go to computer maybe they have tidied this up on reason 8 and I'll just repeat where I went to now obviously I've gone back uh, previously and I've downloaded a bunch of sound fonts and I've stuck them on my C drive in a folder called sound fonts All right. Um, and I can't remember what I'm looking for now fluid R, right there you go so it's a shame it doesn't remember it and now we've got to look for Tycho drum under presets All right. Get us around about 100, I think. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's cheat. Let's do this. Hopefully, it'll find it for us. Oh, there you go, 117. All right. And so, at this point, if you were to save your song, you finally got the thing how you want it. Now, I know that took a hell of a lot longer to explain than it does to do. Um, what you'll need to do, if you want to do the same thing, um, if you're a Reason user, and you want action stations to sound a bit more authentic um, then obviously you'll need to get hold of the fluid sound font and I'll post a link at the end of this video I think you can get it from the synth font website but anyway I'll, I'll sort the link out later um, now the only other thing to mention of course is you could actually go through and change all of these drums as well to um, NNXT's I'm not going to do that now, hopefully you've got the right idea at this point. Um, you basically go in here, you browse your instruments, you would replace this IDA with an NNXT, and then you would go in and um, once you've got it loaded, you do what we did here, which is we open this bit up, once it finally decides to load, um, I had to go and search for the sound font on my C drive, and then once once you've done that on one of these, obviously you can just pick one of the presets. It becomes quite easy. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea. There's there's tons more we can talk about with this. But before I go, I'll just play you it. So oh, it's sounding much more like a drum track. And if I go to measure wherever it was where the Tycho drum kicks in, 17. So it's not identical, but it gives you, at least it gives you a couple of extra drum tracks. All right, so I hope that was useful. We're at about 12 and a half minute mark now. Uh, I hope that was worth your time. And um, I hope that we can hear the audio when I play it back. I'll see you shortly. So that's it from me on this one. There's tons more we can talk about here. Uh, I'll save that for our next video and uh, look forward to seeing you there. Bye for now.